I might get emotional on this. Knox has been good to me. Man. Mm. I came to Knox City. I was driving an old Ford pickup. I was in college. I didn't have no money. I didn't have nothing. I mean, nothing at all. I had a lot of fun. I had lots and lots of fun. That was my problem. I wish it was about fun. And me and Tony were both going to school, and we started a hunt business. And it was during the middle of the season, we started kind of by, by faith that it happened. And that next off season, we lived here. We met some people. Got to be friends with little people in the community. Not a lot. That next off season, we started coming up here all the time. It's 115 miles from my home here in Wichita Falls at 55 miles an hour. We moved to Knox City in 1994, 95. We was outsiders. Um, the, a lot of the locals would say, hey, there's them assholes that lease all the land around here. But we had to go in business to be able to lease the land, to be able to have a place to hunt. It was kind of a culture shock from Wichita Falls. First time I hunted here, I met guys at the Alsips, 5 a.m. with Knox City at the Alsips. That was the only thing open at five o'clock in Knox City. Knox City then probably had 1,200 people here. It's a really nice community. It's a great place to raise your family and kids. It's a great community. And back then it was like almost all these small towns in West Texas, they still had some kind of oil industry and they were still kind of growing and kind of hanging on and staying the same. And they'd stayed the same for a long time. Well, I drove in at four, four to five o'clock in the morning, whatever time it was, and there's a north wind it hit. It had, we had a northern hit, a blue northern hit in the middle of the night. And I got by the football field right by Kathy and Jack's restaurant, which hasn't been open for 15 years. But anyways, it's right by the football stadium and that road runs north to south. Well, that dirt was just blowing, just dirt, just coming across the pavement. And I looked at it and there ain't a, there ain't a soul anywhere. The light's kind of fading out with the wind, winds 130 or 40 miles an hour. And I'll never forget this. This is 35 years ago. And I'm thinking to myself, what kind of jackass would live in this town? There ain't nothing here. I'll never forget that. I think, man, there ain't shit in this town. Little did I know that my whole life would be two blocks from that intersection. It's where we raised our boys. It's where my business grew. It's where my lodge burned down the first time when we built a new one. It's where my dad got sick and died of cancer. It's everything in my life. was two blocks from that very intersection. And I thought, who the hell lives in this place? And man, it's the greatest town in the world. So blessed, so blessed. Uh, I talk about this a lot with my friends that have left and gone on. And when they come back, they've just got such a feeling of home. And it, I wish everyone could make their living here like we do, but I understand. I mean, it's, and it, Knox City is dying. And don't, I don't think there's anything we can do about that. We try. Yeah, Knox City is just always going to be home. It's always going to be home to my kids. Obviously, Andy has chosen, and Jesse have chosen to raise their boys here. Oh, that's awesome, bud. Who built that? That is awesome. Give me five. I sure love you. You've got such a good heart. You and your brother both of you. You know, y'all are perfect. Who's? Are you the perfect grandkid? I think so, too. Knox City was a great place just because I really didn't know what else was out there. I mean, it's, it's a special place, it's a small town. Everybody knows everybody's business, which is good or bad. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. There's no other place like it. I mean, I value that my kids are not going to be indoctrinated with some of the big, big, uh, big city problems that we're seeing all over the country. Um, and the, the hunting's phenomenal. I mean, there, there's no place like it. Just the small town atmosphere, and the locale of the birds, you're not having to put in a ton of miles scouting every night. The birds are pretty easy to find and it's just, it's a safe place to bring up your kids and make sure that the family unit is a priority. When I first stumbled on Knox City, it was not an intention to move there by no means. 
it's just, we were looking for birds and I found the birds and after looking at the whole area that first year we was there, in about a 30 mile radius, that area wintered anywhere from a half million to a million birds. At that time, most of them were lesser Canada's and they would roost on these big lakes up in the wheat country and then they would fly to the peanut country, which was south. The area is divided by the Brazos River. What we call the wheat country is north of the Brazos River. The peanut country is the stuff south of the Brazos River, which is irrigated property. And in the irrigated property, there's three or four or five playa lakes that now will hold, you know, 50 to 100,000 geese itself. In 1981, 82, we had a major cold vortex that hit and hit around Thanksgiving day. It was so cold that year that we would stand on the ice and the, we had grebes for decoys. We didn't even have to put decoys out. We'd shoot 100 shells and go home. It was, it was absolutely amazing. That same time that cold front hit, that year they had planted a bunch of peanuts up here. Well, that big front pushed a bunch of small lesser candidates here. We had some geese. We had a lot of ducks back then. After that, every year, those geese imprinted. It was a big hatch that year and all them young geese started coming back. All the peanuts, they start growing more and more and more peanuts. So we, get, we got water, we got food, and no pressure on them. The geese flourished here. The warm spell over the last 30 years, the lessers don't migrate to our area like they used to, but we'll winter 50 to 150,000 speckle bellies in our area. So we're one of the largest wintering grounds for speckle bellies in the south. And that's one of our big thing right now. You're talking about some beautiful speckle bellies. You want to go on a good trophy speckle belly hunt? We, we're the place that you want to go for that. Alpha Outdoors, home of the Stanfield Stool. Good company, Southeast company fabrication company. They're making more and more things. They've got a blind caddy. They've got the Stanfield stool you can sit on, give your back a rest. They got the, they got another really cool gadget they have for people. Got a strap around your gun and it's got a magnet on it. So if you're timber hunting, you can put your gun on a tree and it don't fall in the water. You don't have to hold it all the time. You can call and grab your gun and shoot and a, a really good company. And I'm proud to be part of them too, the Alpha Outdoor Specialties. Blake knew her before she got paralyzed, and then the first time he saw her after this, he tried to give her. Didn't he try to give her a he high five? Shake or shake her, yeah. I've never met a paralyzed person before. Gotcha. I'm sorry. Do your research next time. We can't move. He was nervous. <laughs> I was very nervous. <laughs> Cassandra Ledesma. Cassandra worked, worked for us for a couple of years. She worked during dove season and goose season. She worked three or four nights a week helping in the kitchen night. Great employee, God almighty. Loved on them grandkids, picked them up, played with them, played catch with them outside, in between getting stuff done, just all around good person. Just everybody loves Cassandra in Knox City and she's in a bad car accident. My phone rings like immediately as soon as that scanner goes off. And I answer my phone, and it's a guy I know in, in Knox City, a, friend, a good friend of mine. And he goes, hey, he goes, do you have Fred's phone number? I was like, yeah, what's going on? He goes, Fred's car, Fred's daughter's in that wreck. I go, fuck. I'm like, how bad is she? He goes, I think she's hurt pretty bad. I said, she's alive. He said, yeah, she's alive. He goes, would you call Fred? I said, yeah, I'll call Fred. So I called Fred up, and I said, hey, Cassandra's been in a bad accident. He goes, do you mind going to the scene for me until I get there? I said, no, not at all. And so I take off. I don't even tell Michelle what's going on. I just get in my truck and I leave. And I get to her and she's like, Jeff, she goes, she started getting some tears in her eyes. She goes, will you call my dad? I said, your dad's on your way, baby. I called him. She says, I'm scared. I said, I'll be okay. So you're gonna be all right. I said, I promise you, you'll be okay, Cassandra. The ambulance is their helicopter will be here in a minute to pick you up. I helped them put her on the stretcher. And I, I, I picked up her arm. She, and it just, I knew right then that she was paralyzed for the rest of her life because I could pick it up. It was just like, it wasn't even there. 
and I had to look her in the eye and tell her it's gonna be okay. And I lied to her, and I knew I lied to her when I told her that, because I knew she wasn't gonna be okay. She's paralyzed from her neck down. She comes out here sometimes. She goes everywhere in Dog City. If we have a basketball game, she's there. If we have a football game, she's there. I see her at Dollar General, I see her in the grocery store. And she's the bravest, strongest lady I've ever known in my entire life. She lives by herself. There's people that fucking can't live by themselves, that can do everything. And this girl is paralyzed from her neck down and she lives by herself and never complains. She's hard-headed. There's no doubt about that. And that's probably what's made her go so far. But she never bitches. She never complains. She never says, why me? I've said, why me? A lot of times about her. I don't understand. She's such a good kid. I feel like I'm still the same, but I'm just a little bit more happy. And it's crazy to say that because you would think in a situation like this and everything being taken away from me, I would be miserable or mad about it. But I'm really not at all because it could have been this way or my friends and family could be talking to a rock right now, you know? So I'd take this over a rock any day. <laughs> I can support, then I'll be there because I can't physically do much. So me just showing up, like make somebody else happy or, you know, not just to make them happy, but to make me feel like I'm still a part of, I don't know, still a part of everything. Cassandra gives me a lot of shit. She likes to screw with me, and I deserve it, and I talk shit to her, but she, she does talk to me. But when she comes out here, Jameson will ride on that wheelchair with her. And, and it's not just my grandkids either. It's kids in town. You'll see her at a football game, and kids hanging on her, like Bay Bay's kids, and she's going up and down the parking lot with these kids hanging all over her and stuff. And They love her wheelchair, and they love Cassandra. I asked her, I said, Cassandra, I said, why don't you move, because Fred moved Fred and his wife moved and, and, and they had a new baby and, and she has she has two other kids and they moved to where she's from in Oklahoma and they tried to get Cassandra to move with them and I asked Cassandra, I said, Cassandra, why don't you move where your daddy's at? Or why don't you move to closer to rehab hospital, you know, in Abilene or Wichita or Dallas, Houston, wherever, to a rehab hospital? She calls me Judge. She goes, Judge, let me tell you something. She goes, if I move to Dallas, or any of them other places, I'm just that girl in that wheelchair. If you see me at a grocery store, well, there's that girl in the wheelchair again. She goes, but Knox City, I'm Cassandra, everybody knows me. These are my family, these are my friends. Just, just she's just a strong person and that's that made a lot of sense. And I understand why she wants to be in Knox City. It's her home, just like it is mine. Yes. Where's Bitchy Blake at? I didn't see him today. He owes me 50 bucks. Exactly. <laughs>